going to be more than just square roots. Okay, you probably had some experience with some of the stuff with square roots before, but not necessarily with the higher powered roots. So we're going to start with just plain old simplify. Okay, we're going to talk about simplifying radical expressions. Now this is the part that I've kind of assumed that you have done before, um, but not necessarily. So if you haven't gotten it when we've been talking about it uh, before in this class, then you should definitely get it after today. Um, so the key to simplifying your radical expressions is that you need to express the number that is under the radical as the product of a perfect square, when you're talking about square roots, and another number. We'll talk about the other roots here in a little bit. Um, and then you want to simplify, and you need to multiply any coefficients, if there are coefficients. So, for example, 216 is not a perfect square, all right? But it is divisible by um, perfect squares. Now, when I am splitting these up, the goal is you want to get the biggest perfect square because sometimes there's more than one that will evenly divide into 216. Uh, for example, I think, and it probably, I'm trying to use this as an example, it's not going to work. 216 is divisible by 4, okay? But 4 is not the biggest perfect square that 216 is divisible by. Um, I believe that it, it is divisible by 36. Okay, you want to get the biggest one possible. So 36 times 6 is 216, all right? And for the first few, I'm going to break it down like this because some, a lot of you are more visual and it helps you to see exactly how this breaks down. So when you have a product under a radical, you can rewrite that as the product of two radicals. So the square root of 36 times the square root of 6, and the square root of 36 is 6. So that radical is gone. We cannot break down the square root of 6 anymore because it's not divisible by another perfect square. So 6 square roots of 6 is equivalent to the square root of 216. Um, now, again, it won't tell you if you simplified everything or simplified it fully, but you can at least check and see if your answer is equivalent to the original radical by just typing it in, getting the decimal form of each one, square root of 216, and 6 square root of 6, and confirming that those have the same decimal value. Okay? Say, for example, we have something like negative 7 times the square root of 196. Okay? We're going to leave the negative 7 hanging out there for a little while while we deal with 196. All right. Um, let's see here. Is 196 also <coughs> divisible by 36? It is not. Um, how about we try 16? Nope. Nine? Nope. Four? Oh, wait. 196 is a perfect square. Uh, how do I know that? Because when I got to four, the other factor is 49, and 49 is a perfect square. So guess what? 196 is... Uh, no, not 13. 14. My bad. Whew. 14. 14 squared. Um, unfortunately, my list up here only goes up to 12, um, so we didn't see that right off the bat. Um, but, I mean, that's how you would catch something like that. Okay, 4 and 49 are both for perfect squares. Um, so what we're looking at here is negative 7 times 14, which is, let's see here, negative 98. Is that right? Something about that seems wrong. Nope. Okay. We're good. Negative 98. All right. Well, we are in pre-calculus after all. What would math be without some letters, right? Uh, so, what happens when we have variables under there? Same thing, except... Um, the variables work out just a little bit differently, okay? Uh, let's see here, 80. I know 80 is divisible by 4, but 20 is what's left over. It's also divisible by 4. So it is 16 times uh, 5. Yeah, 16 times 5. Okay, 
Um, so when I rewrite this, square root of 16 times square root of 5, and I'm going to give the x to the fourth its own radical there. The square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 5 is as simple as it'll go. The square root of 4, when you're taking the square root of something with a power, you divide the power by the root. So this is the square root. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. So the square root of x to the 4th is x squared. Um, so we don't really leave it like that. Okay, the x squared needs to go in front of the radical. The radical is always the last thing you write in the expression. So that would be 4x squared square root of 5. Now that one's a little bit harder to check because of the variable part in it. Uh, if you wanted to try and check that, you just need to assign the variable a number. Okay, so don't pick something like 1 or 2. Okay, pick something like 6. Okay, um, I'm just trying to check to make sure that this is equivalent. So 4 times 6 squared times the square root of 5. See if that gives us the same value, and it does. Okay. So it's not necessarily the most efficient thing to do, but it can never, ever hurt to check. All right, 252k cubed. Um, I'm thinking maybe 16, maybe not. No, did you say 9? Yep, and it is actually 36 because 28 is divisible by a perfect square. 36 times 7. Okay, 36 times 7. Because when I did 9, I was left with 28, and 28 is divisible by a perfect square. It's divisible by 4, so 9 times 4 is 36. All right, now... um. When I break this one up, my variable doesn't have an even power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split that k cubed up kind of like I'm splitting my numbers up. And I'm going to split it up so that it has one even exponent and one not even exponent. Remember when you multiply things that have exponents, you add their exponents. So this would be 6k, and since the 7 and the other k are still under radicals, I'm going to put them back together under a single radical. Yes, ma'am? With the power, when it's an odd number, I'm going to split it up so that um, I've got the biggest even number and whatever's left over. So, oh, when I simplify it, you divide. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so that'd be the first number. Okay, hopefully those arrows kind of help you see where everything came from in that final expression. Okay, let's do one more like this. Negative 6 square root of 45 x squared y to the 4th. Okay, again, leave that coefficient of 6 out front for right now. 45 would be uh, 9 times 5. x squared is even, so we'll leave it. y to the 4th is even, so we don't have to split that one up either. So we have, try not to do too much at once. I know some of you probably see it, but I'm just trying to take it kind of slowly here. The square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 5 has got to stay. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of y to the fourth is y squared. We are dividing the power by the root. Okay, 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So our final answer here is negative 18xy squared times the square root of 5. 
And if you really wanted to check that one, you would need to pick different numerical values for x and y to try and check it. Okay? Any major questions? I'm going to let you try some.